hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Exara and this this is your first time being here thank you for tuning in if this isn't your first time being here thank you for coming back because lord knows I need the views um, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in as I said before today I'm gonna be I'm um, talking about my experience my journey to Oxford um, as most of you know or if I haven't stated enough um, I go to Oxford University and today I kind of just want to um, go over the things I did to get into Oxford by the way this is not a, um, a structure of do this and you'll get into Oxford as well um, just the disclaimer that I want to put out there because I feel like a lot of people can watch certain things um, if they have the same aspirations um, and kind of get confused as to you know this is the template that I should follow this not the template that you should follow I'm just saying this is my experience um, if you see me looking down again I'm using my phone because if I don't I'll be an incoherent mess <laughs> so um, yeah so let's just start off with a little bit about my educational background um, coming from a very low income background and um a working class very very working class background um i did not have that cultural capital of fostering um education and academics at home in secondary school uh, i'm just going to start from secondary school because i'm not going all the way to practice what, what happened in primary um secondary school um if you're a non-uk viewer secondary school is from the ages of 11 to 16 i think so five years and then sixth form which i'll also be referring to is 16 to 18 or 19 years old um so secondary school um i think i was quite a bright kid um i was not always the top of my class but i was within that range um it varied from subject to subject mostly in the humanities i was mostly at the top of my class and then um in the sciences and maths okay <laughs> um i'm not a science person i'm not a math person i don't like those subjects um but i did okay um I know a lot of people would sometimes tell me oh Xara, like you're really really smart like you're you you would fit in into one of these you know those Russell Group universities or like those top-notch universities like Harvard or Oxford and then I remember hearing this and I was like I laughed I was like what no not me <laughs> me little old me nah me from um Woolly nah not me <laughs> not me <laughs> South East London me uh-uh so like I didn't from a young age the fact that I didn't have those aspirations for myself is actually quite upsetting because um I don't know why I didn't think that I couldn't go to those universities um maybe it's the internalization of the representation that i saw um and how mythicized and um mythicized oxford and a lot of these top top um universities are and um the fact that i didn't see myself in that place so it came to gcse's and i actually did quite well at gcse's um i was actually that person that cried because i didn't get enough a stars I was a nerd back in secondary school like I would ask for more homework I was such a nerd like or I put in so much effort in secondary school for my GCSEs I feel like I put in way more effort in G um, secondary school than I do now in my actual degree so um I'm just gonna put that out there uh, yeah but I did well I got my A's and A stars but I feel like again one of the reasons why I was so upset is because I believe that to move on to the next stage or to move on to to be able to get a good you know a good uni a good uni place i need to get all a stars um 100 in every exam and i think it's mostly because of this um again this mythicization of um russell group universities and oxbridge and this whole narrative of um these universities being inaccessible to lower income and working class back working class kids and them not seeing themselves represented in it so they think that they have to go above and beyond and break their absolute backs which they do and don't get me wrong they do but um not setting realistic expectations for themselves in order to get into these universities can also be very harmful to their progress and if you are from these type of backgrounds one of the things that i would say for you to focus on if you're doing gcse's or even a levels or ib is focus on setting realistic goals for yourself and working as hard as you can to meet your own goals um and obviously these goals will coincide um with the university that you want to go to but if the if your uni or your sixth form asks for 
I don't know, three A's um, in this subject, but you think that you need to get three A stars to prove yourself, to prove that you have a place there. We'll come into imposter syndrome later. Um, don't do it because you'll, you'll, first of all, you're just gonna tie yourself out. Um, if you do feel like you want to go above and beyond, do it, but do not push yourself so much that you start to doubt your own capabilities. So yeah, then I move on to sixth form. So b the summer of um, year 11, so when I was 16 and I got my GCSE results, I actually went to a UCL summer school um yeah i was going to a summer school i was thinking of uni that early on um even though i actually didn't want to go to uni which was really really weird but i was like oh okay let me just go and see a taster blah 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 let me go and see what's happening and things like that um so i went to a ucl summer school i had fun there it was kind of like a taste of what uni would be like getting used to a tutorial system getting used to a um, essay writing system an independent essay writing system um and i think it kind of solidified in my mind that I really wanted to do history at university. I don't think it actually solidified I wanted to do history. I, it solidified that I definitely want to do humanity subject because I was never going to do science. Like, I'm not a science babe. I'm not a mathematics babe at all. So, um, yeah, it kind of solidified that for me. And um, that summer as well, I also got a UCAS book. <laughs> yeah, I was like 15 or 16. Um, and I was like... I'm thinking about it now, I'm like, what were you doing? <laughs> it really helped me, but I got this book. I'll put it up here. Um, I'll put the picture up here, hopefully, if my editing skills are that good by then. Um, and I bought this UCAS book and it really helped me in the long run. Um, and I found it in the when I was 16. Um, I read through it, like, maybe I read, I don't know, a few chapters. It wasn't even a few chapters because it was only a few pages that were... Um, that um that i needed for history so the book featured different personal statements for different subjects um uh, it's kind of like a compilation of different ucas statements and it's actually by ucas um and it looks at what things went wrong what things went badly the offers that they got the declines that they got and i'm not saying do, do not use this as a template but use this as kind of like a foundation to build up on um so yeah moving on to actual sixth form first year of sixth form i feel like was such a blur i don't even know if it happened i think that was 2017 i feel like 2017 was such a blur for everybody i don't even know if i did 2017 um so first year of sixth form um i was actually looking into different summer schools that i could um, apply to because um I would actually have more options for summer schools as a 17 year old compared to like a 15, 16 year old because um, that's the, is it your penultimate year? Yeah, it's your penultimate year. So they, um, a lot of universities start looking at summer schools then, start looking at um, engaging with sixth form students, college students to kind of entice them into applying to their universities. So I actually went to um, three universities, three universities. Um, <laughs> I went to three summer schools. I went to Cambridge Summer School under the Sutton Trust program. I went to the UCL under the UCL program, which is like an independent UCL thing. Um, and I think I got like an automatic offer because I had gone to the one in year 11. And then I went to the Ox Oxford um, Unique Summer School. So I was, I was a little bit greedy there, but um, knowing myself, research, research and access resources was the biggest thing that I could put in my um weaponry or whatever you want to call it so i knew that it was so pivotal because as i said before i knew that i was not starting off on an even playing field so i needed to get as much free information as i could as possible because i can, i cannot afford i could not afford to like pay for tutors pay for um interviewers all of the summer schools that i had access to so the summer schools actually solidified um the the universities that i wanted to apply to um the Cambridge one, I, I, I did history of all of them, by the way. The Cambridge one, um, I did not like at all. It wasn't even just the Cambridge Summer School. I remember getting to Cambridge for the first time and I was like, what is this? Um, the town, I felt suffocated. Like, the town felt so small to me. This was after I um, had gone to Oxford. And the town felt so small to me. Um, the, like, the sh available shops like it it was just i felt claustrophobic you know it was it was i felt claustrophobic and i just felt like it wasn't the t it wasn't the uni for me um the scenery i mean the culture there is very similar to oxford but i just preferred oxford culture a bit more um now the module and the syllabus was so dead and i did not want it um and i even remember like the actual summer school syllabus we were learning about 
sheep cotton in 15th century Germany and I was like do I look like I want to be learning about sheep cotton in 15th century Germany no um and the Oxford one was about um race and politics which that's that's my jam that's what I like um so yeah that was kind of the deciding factors so an essential tip is if you do have the chance to go to summer schools I would definitely recommend going to summer schools especially go to summer schools that you think that you'd be interested in to go into university at because then it will kind of give you a further experience of what these what these universities are like um so Oxford summer school I re I loved Oxford summer school so much like the rigorous academia I, it wasn't rigorous enough that i hated it but like the the just the culture of oxford the whole like um and i actually went to i applied to pembroke because um that's where my course was mostly mostly run so the course i took at summer school um featured pembroke college which i am at now alright <laughs> but then back then I love Pembroke um, and also it's 30 there's like 38 36 to 38 colleges I I'm such an indecisive person it will take me forever to choose a college so I chose the one that I was most familiar with um, and also it had nice flowers yeah you heard that right I chose my college based off of its garden whilst my peers were saying oh look at um look at their income for 20 2016 2015 that looks really really high look at their faculty oh look at the kind of tutors that they have um and exira i like the flowers yeah the flowers look really nice um but thank god i think it was definitely the right decision for me and i i i like the staff at Pembroke, the history staff are amazing so yeah um so after that year 13 um i started get, gathering my application together um i started brainstorming about my personal statement in the summer actually um because i had kind of been pushed towards this um by the summer schools to start our personal statements and we had been given tips and um tricks for our personal statement not tricks because i don't want to i don't want anybody to think oh if i go to summer school i get an exclusive offer or anything like that no um they just gave us some tips on how to best formulate our personal statements and um, based on our subjects etc um so i when i started on my personal statement um i actually included a lot of um things to do with pan-africanism so my the theme of my personal statement was the identities and the for different forms of pan-africanism within the pan-africanist community um so i looked at walter rodney he was a big pan-africanist um and he actually wrote a seminal book how europe underdeveloped africa it's still been i still i'm still reading it now i read it from one of my previous modules i love rodney I, but now I can criticise him a little bit more. Rodney's still my boy, but yeah, you know, there's... <laughs> we've evolved a little bit. But um, yeah, and I also um, featured the impact that Kwame... Uh, the impact and the role of Kwame Nkrumah in the Ghanaian independence and decolonisation of Ghana. Um, so my personal statement was very blackity black. It was very blackity blackity black. <laughs> and um, I think... In terms of, I also looked at the decolonize, not looked, but I, I think I mentioned a little bit about the decolonization, decolonizing the curriculum and how Oxford fit into that and why that, why that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Oxford because, um, Oxford was making like um, some changes in comparison to other unis. It wasn't the best, but it was better than some. So um, it kind of showed that I had a really wide scope and I had research and I had, I had a valid, not a valid reason, but I had a good reason why I actually wanted to come here in terms of the academic history, um, the current place they are in the academic world and the political world and social world. So um, yeah, I think researching about your unis as well is very important. And I would, I would actually suggest place that into your personal statement as to why you want to go to that uni and place it within maybe a political, or social or cultural context instead of saying, I want to go to this university because, um, I don't know, the building is nice or whatever. Obviously you wouldn't write that, but try and think above, like, try and think outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so when I was actually taking my hat exam, so, um, when you go to when you apply to oxbridge you actually have to take interviews and assessments you have a lot of interviews and assessments when you're applying to oxbridge um when 
actually prior to that I went to a lot of interview and assessment workshops and I'm going to reiterate this again again I did not have the cultural capital I was aware about I was aware of this very early on and one of the things that I would definitely recommend is get as many re free resources as possible any opportunity that you have grab it use it and utilize it to an, an efficient effect um so I had I went to some interview workshops and some assessment workshops as well that were those were really really helpful and I'm so grateful I had the opportunity and privilege to be able to find about find out about those um and when I was actually doing the hat I actually focused mostly so the history assessment I don't even know what it stands for I actually focus primarily on the structure and the format of the hat which is really important instead of content i remember one of my friends um at, when i when we were at formal said that um like one of her friends actually scored like top marks in the hat and he did not look at any content at all but focused mostly on structure and the format of the exam um which is something that is again if you are thinking about taking history and you're looking into the assessment the hat um, assessment um i would say hat is more about concept the concept than content um so that is really really important when you're considering taking the hat um i think i i remember my scores my scores were like average so it was average for a person that would be admitted to oxford so um yeah i think i did quite well for the hat uh my i was when it, my interviews came i was actually quite ambivalent to my interview process i had a, like mixed feelings at one point i was like oh my god i'm not gonna do well at this interview like i have no experience at all i remember the like the week before um i had asked for time off because i had to go to down to oxford to take my interview and my my six one were like why and i was like because I have an interview for Oxford and they were like when I was like in two days and they were like oh do you need help and I was like it's a bit late for that now isn't it but um yeah so <clears throat> I went to my interviews as I mentioned before I was very very ambivalent towards them at one point I was like I'm gonna fail this at another point I was like mm, you know what F it whatever happens happens um, I think my interview process went okay. Um, like I again, I did averagely for a person that would be admitted to Oxford. Um, there was this one question though that I was like, man, like they're unrelenting with this question. So they asked me why I would get a certain source, and I I just kept giving answers and answers. And I asked, and they were I asked later like this year, and they were like, yeah, they were the correct answers. So I was like, so why did you keep asking me the same question? They were like, we wanted to see how you could differently interpret it, and I was like what <laughs> but yeah they really push you at your interviews and they really want to see your full potential um and one thing is that if you notice your interview questions getting harder and harder to a point where it's like your mind is going to explode it's actually a good indication that they've pushed you to a place where they believe that you have high potential um don't take this as like the don't take this as like you know um oh okay so that's definitely gonna happen i'm definitely gonna get in if i get to a place where no but um it's an indicator so um <clears throat> when i got my offer i felt like i don't know i felt really really happy obviously i felt happy but i felt like i was then that girl that got the oxford offer i was that girl that um the oxford girl basically in my sixth form because i was actually the only person in my six for in the history of my six forms again oxford not even on oxford an oxford offer um they had sent people prior um they had sent people to oxbridge prior to me um to it for interviews but p nobody had ever gotten an offer so i was the first person and i was a black girl and i was very very like i was very proud of myself because as i said before i come from like, a very underprivileged background um and i was able to do that all by myself with accessing all the resources and the opportunities that i was given so i was very proud of myself but at the same time i felt like there was such a heavy weight on my shoulder and um ib was not going great either so like that kind of added to my anxiety and i felt like year 13 overall for me was disastrous i, I could not explain if if i wanted to kind of sum up um year 13 in one word it would be calamity honestly honestly no cap calamity um <laughs> so yeah it was just such a terrible time for me um 
So I took my exams, um, I did IB, so I took my exams in May and I got my exams back in, not my exam, my results back in June, no July, so like a month before A-levels people got them. So that meant that I kind of had the opportunity to tell Oxford about my results before A-levels and they can kind of like put those into consideration. Um, so when I got my results, it was, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> It did not go well um, and I had some extenuating circumstances um, throughout the period of that year so that kind of impacted my exams as well and um, when I got my results back I can just remember just crying so much because not 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 because I didn't um, get into Oxford per se but because I kind of fulfilled what was my worst fear and that was like sorry my camera died there um so it was letting other people down which to me now it seems like the craziest thing ever but being defined so much by oxford um i think it really got into my head and i think that's one of the reasons why i didn't do so well in my exams as well mostly because it contributed to the anxiety but i my exams went off for remarks and i was able to meet the threshold um for entrance so i mean it all kind of worked out in the end um and i knew that all my hard work had um paid off but i think i attribute it most mostly to god because he really really saw me through i remember like i kind of went into prayer warrior mode in that i'm a very religious person so i prayed quite a lot um and it was one of those few instances where i saw the acts of prayer like paying off um and the acts of dedication towards god paying off as well and that that I think that really was a, a good experience as well overall um <clears throat> yeah I think that's that's it I don't know what else to say <laughs> that that was literally my Oxford journey it there was a lot more in between um a lot of the things that I've mentioned but I wanted to keep it as short as possible even though this is probably 20 minutes um but yeah I hope you guys got inspired or something like along those lines um you can do it as well like i know if somebody like my ass can do it like with all the obstacles i had to overcome you can do it if you want to um if you guys want me to um, focus specifically on anything anything please leave it down in the comments and i'll see what i can do but um yeah other than that thank you so much for watching the video and i hope you guys have a great day have a great week weekend evening afternoon morning Okay, bye. <laughs>